Now we come to item number two. Sri Conrad K. Sama to make a statement on the interstate boundary issue on the Rule 55 of the Rules and Procedure and Conduct of Business. Chief Minister, please. Mr. Speaker, sir, at the very outset, I am very grateful uh, to you for giving me this opportunity to make a statement on a very, very important matter relating to the interstate boundary issue. Sir, ever since the state of Meghalaya came into existence, the interstate boundary dispute between Assam and Meghalaya, as defined by the Northeastern Areas Reorganization Act 1971, has been a bone of contention between the two states. So the 12 areas of differences furnished by the state of Meghalaya, wide letter number POL.78 slash 2010 slash 2209, dated 8th of August 2011, are number one, Tarabari, number two, Gizang, number three, Hahim, number four, Langpi, number five, Bordua, number six, Boklapara, number seven, Nongwa, Mautwar, number eight, Kanapara, Pilankata, number nine, Desh Dumreya, number ten, Block One and Block Two, number eleven, Prisiar and Kanduli, and number twelve, Ratachera. Sir, on the 23rd of July, 2021, there was a meeting at Shillong between the Chief Minister of Assam and the Chief Minister of Meghalaya. And on that day, it was decided that six areas of differences, namely, number one, Tarabari, number two, Gizang, number three, Hahim, number four, Boklapara, number five, Kanapara, Pilankata, and number six, Ratachera, would be taken up for consideration in the first phase. Subsequently, another five rounds of meetings between both the chief ministers were held. In the meeting between the chief ministers, chief minister of Assam and chief minister of Meghalaya, on the 6th of August 2021 at Guwahati, it was decided that regional committees headed by senior cabinet ministers and local MLAs and other officials as members will be constituted from both sides for the six areas of differences. These regional committees will be tasked to jointly visit the six areas of differences. It was also decided that the criteria to be followed will be based on five mutually agreed principles. Number one, the historic, historical perspective. Number two, the ethnicity of the local population. Number three, the contiguity with the boundary. Number four, people's will. And number five, administrative convenience as the yardsticks. In pursuance of the above decision, the government of Assam, by notification number BPDD 173 slash 2017 slash 172, Two, dated 23rd of September 2021 and Government of Meghalaya wide notification number POL.68 slash 2015 slash 194 dated 7th September 2021 
notified the three regional committees for Ribhoi, number two, West Khasi Hills, and number three, East Jente Hills. The committee for Ribhoi was headed by the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister, Sri Preston Tinsong, and the other MLAs of the area and the district. The second committee for West Khasi Hills was chaired by Sri Renington Lingdo Tonkar and other MLAs and officials of the district. For the East Jente Hills, the committee was chaired by Sri Snobalang Dhar, Honorable Cabinet Minister, other ministers, and other MLAs and officials. And these committees were given the terms of reference, which included inter alia, to, in, to coordinate with the counterpart regional committees, to jointly visit the villages, interact with the local communities, and interact with other stakeholders. The regional committees were to submit their report to their respective governments at the earliest. On the 16th of November 2021, at Guwahati, in a meeting between the Chief Minister of Assam and the Chief Minister of Meghalaya, it was decided that the three regional committees of each of the states will submit their reports by 30th of November 2021 to their respective Chief Ministers and may undertake further visits to their respective areas if felt necessary. The three regional committees of Assam and Meghalaya have conducted joint inspections, visited the six areas of differences, carried out consultation not only with the villagers and local communities living in the area, but also with other stakeholders like traditional heads, district councils, and civil society organizations. During the process of conducting these visits, a total of 22 visits and meetings were made by these three different regional committees. The Chief Minister of Meghalaya and Chief Minister of Assam had a meeting in Guwahati on the 22nd of December 2021 and decided that the regional committees of both the states shall will share their reports with their counterparts by 31st of December 2021. For this end, the Chief Minister of Meghalaya and Chief Minister of Assam met on the 12th of January 2022, wherein it was decided that the reports of the regional committees will be consolidated and the joint report of both the states will be submitted to the Chief Minister of each state so that the matter can be taken up with the Government of India. It was decided that any other area slash villages situated outside the areas of difference shown in the maps submitted by Meghalaya via their letter number POL.78-2010-2091 dated 8th of August 2000 level 2011 will not be considered. Finally, based on the reports of the regional committees on the 29th of January 2022, a MOU was signed between the states of Assam and Meghalaya to record the agreed position arrived at between the two states and to conclude the process of joint consultations. The process of this MOU is to, the purpose of this MOU is to come to a conclusion to the interstate boundary between the states of Assam and Meghalaya in respect of the six areas of differences out of which 12, out of the total of 12 areas of differences as furnished by the state of Meghalaya 
wide letter number POL.78-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010-2010
and Dreamland Resort will be with Assam. The rest of the areas, including the entire apartment complex of Brahmaputra Realtors Private Limited, will be with Meghalaya. In Patarkuchi area, areas inhabited by ethnic communities of Meghalaya and their religious and cultural places, if any, will be included in Meghalaya during, during detailed survey. In Maikuli area, Maumari Bill, which is adjacent to Maikuli playground, will remain with Assam, and the Maikuli graveyard will be with Meghalaya. East Gentia Hills District, Ratachera area. Out of the total four villages, three villages, namely Malidor, Ratachera, and Bodar Umpadet will be in Meghalaya. The remaining village of Baleshwar Grant venue village will be part of Assam. In summary, both the state governments have agreed on the following. Number one, both the state governments have agreed that no new area of difference shall be added in future beyond the already identified 12 areas of differences. Out of the total of 36 villages claimed by Meghalaya in 2011, a total of 30, some fully and a few partially, is being recommended to be within Meghalaya. The details are as follows. Tarabari, out of eight villages, all eight. In Gizam, out of three villages, two in Meghalaya. In Hahim, out of 12 villages, 11 in Meghalaya. Boklapara, out of two villages, one village in Meghalaya. Khanapara, Pilankata, out of the six, five. Ratachera, out of the five, three. The areas mentioned above and the areas, yeah, the areas mentioned above have been arrived through a tabletop exercise using spatial technologies and will be more accurately determined during the detailed survey to be undertaken by Survey of India in the presence of the respective, of the representatives from both the state governments. A rough area of 36.79 kilometers in these six areas are under differences. And after the detailed discussion, surveys, and visits being made by the regional committees, approximately 18 square kilometers plus minus will come to Meghalaya, and 18 square kilometers plus minus will go to Assam. Ownership of the land will not be affected irrespective of the administrative control by whichever state gets the particular area. Sir, I am very happy to be able to present this particular statement to the House, especially on the golden jubilee year of our state. This has been an area which has been under dispute and areas of differences for a very, very long time. And at this point in time, while I make this statement, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the leaders in the past who have contributed to bringing this discussion to this level that we are today. There are many former chief ministers, there are many former ministers, many former chief secretaries and officials who have contributed largely to the discussions and to the details of all the studies that have been done. And it is most appropriate for us to recognize 
the efforts that have been made by them because it was a process. And this process has been moved towards a conclusion today, at least in the six areas, but it would not have been possible for us to come to this level had it not been for the hard work of all the previous governments, all the previous chief ministers, and the officials and ministers who have worked very hard. I also would like to take this opportunity to thank the regional committees. As was mentioned in my statement, the regional committees have visited villages which were never visited before. And to be able to come to a conclusion in this kind of a complicated situation, it cannot be done by simply sitting in Guwahati or in Shillong. It has to be done by visiting the areas and meeting the people who are being affected by this decision. And it is only because of the hard work that has been put in by the regional committees and all the work that has been done by them that we are able to come to this particular MOU today. I also would like to thank our officials who have really worked very hard to be able to bring this to this level. I also would like to thank the Honorable Chief Minister of Assam, who has been a person who has uh, been very supportive and very determined to see that we are able to come to a conclusion. And uh, without his uh, will, and without the will of the government of Meghalaya, this would not have been possible. Therefore, I also thank the Honorable Chief Minister of Assam for uh, the entire push that has been given from his end also, not just to the government of Assam, but to this entire process that has been there. I also would like to mention here, sir, that um, whatever solution that has been come or we have come out with, this has not been something that has been easy for us to do. Uh, we have met officially, unofficially in many situations and occasions and tried to come up with the best solution that is possible. And what I have mentioned today here may not be a perfect solution that we would want, but we strongly have felt that this is the best solution that we can bring forward today and present towards the House. As I said, it has not been an easy exercise. It has been very tough. I will be moving to Delhi on the 9th of this month, uh, where the Honorable Home Minister of uh, India, uh, Government of India, has called both the Chief Minister of Assam and Chief Minister of Meghalaya to finally discuss on the MOU that was signed. And I am very hopeful, sir. I'm very hopeful that we will be able to uh, announce some uh, positive statement on that particular day based on the MOU that has been signed uh, between the two states, uh, the details of which I have shared with this House today. So with these uh, few words and with this particular clarification on the interstate boundary uh, issue that we are having, sir, as I said, I'm happy to inform you that we should be able to come to a conclusion. I would just like to add before I sit down is that um, one very important aspect which we have uh, tried to follow in this entire process of moving forward uh, is that we have tried to realize and understand that um, we cannot simply sit down and base our decision on the positions that we have had for the past many, many decades. Mm -hmm. And we cannot decide also on the basis of only the documentation that we had uh, from whether Assam or from, gov or from uh, government of Meghalaya. And therefore, the five areas or the five criteria that we brought in guided us to be able to come to this conclusion. And uh, I must say that the dominant criteria, the dominant criteria out of these five have been the will of the people of that area and the overall ethnicity of the local population. These had been the dominant criteria, but while saying that a solution is something that uh, different principles and different yardsticks and different criteria can be applied by both the states uh, depending on the situation. Uh, but we have tried to look at people's will and the ethnicity as one of the main criteria, while also considering the other criteria and the past documentation in order to be able to come to a situation where both the states could come to a conclusion on these six areas. So therefore, once again, sir, uh, before I resume my seat, I thank you for giving me this opportunity.
to make a statement on this very, very important issue. And uh, once again, would like to thank uh, each and everyone who has contributed, uh, not just in the present, but in the past also, to be able to come to this level where in the 50th year and golden jubilee of our state, that we should be able to come to a conclusion on not just these six areas. I'm very confident that once we are able to resolve these six areas, and once we're able to come to a conclusion in these six areas, which I'm hopeful in the next few days, we will. I'm very, very hopeful that even the rest of the six locations also, we will be able to move forward in a very, very positive direction. So with these few words and with these statements, sir, I would like to resume my seat. Thank you, sir.